Hi, and welcome back to Epic Restorations. On our last episode, we removed the transmission from our Ford Model A chassis. We'd previously discovered that the throwout bearing was snug against the clutch fingers, and we couldn't move it with our hands. We knew that we should be able to freely move it, so something just wasn't right. We're sure that the pressure plate fingers just aren't set properly, and so today, we're gonna set them right. So, without any further ado, let's get to the shop, and let's get after it. Earlier this week, George removed the pressure plate from the flywheel by carefully removing the 12 hex head bolts and lock washers. With the pressure plate off, it's easier to unstake the bolts and get the pressure plate ready for adjustment. Holding the six fingers in place is a special nut that once tight and adjusted is staked to prevent movement and rotation. Nowadays a lot of people will use Loctite to help secure them as well. Before the fingers can be adjusted, we need to unstake the bolts. Using a thin flathead screwdriver as sort of a hook, I reached down into the gap and forced the left and right tabs up and broke them off. Some people like to use a hacksaw to file them down once they're upright, but we found that ours pretty much all broke off, so this wasn't really necessary. Once all of the bolts were unstaked, we were ready to reinstall the clutch and the pressure plate. We began by placing the clutch disc on the flywheel with the thicker side of the hub facing outward. We did this using a special clutch alignment tool that centers the clutch disc and the pressure plate with the pilot bearing. Before we removed the pressure plate, we marked the flywheel and the pressure plate so that we could realign them as they were when we removed them. Using 12 hex head bolts and lock washers, and with the clutch disc centered, we began to tighten all 12 of the mounting bolts evenly. Each of these bolts should be torqued to about 20 foot-pounds. Once this was done, we removed the clutch disc alignment tool. set this. Again, I'm just going to go around, I'm snugging them all. Not enough to be torqued yet. 
We're set to be 20 foot pillows. I'm setting this to so we can measure five eighths in so that we can set our pressure plate fingers to five eighths. Yeah, see how they all dropped in there when we tighten that pressure plate down. Sooner, look how far I gotta go. Oh, jeez, yeah. So we're really off. That's why we're having trouble. We've got a long right. way to go. Using a half inch wrench and a small flathead screwdriver, we began to tighten the nuts to raise the fingers slowly to that 5 8 inch depth that we wanted. We were closer to an inch when we started, so we had a little ways to go before each one was set properly. Carefully moving from one finger to the next, we adjusted them and checked their depth. Once you've got the fingers set the way you want them, it's a good idea to take your throw-out bearing and set it on the fingers to test for unevenness or rocking. If anything, we gotta check these. The rocking. You want good, solid engagement from the throwout bearing, so you may need to make fine adjustments to the fingers until the wobble is gone. All right, so now we've got these all adjusted to five eighths. Now we have to stake these. So I'm gonna get in the groove. Can you see it? All right, push that down. With the pressure plate attached, it was time to grease up and install a new throwout bearing. Installing it in the bell housing and attaching it with a brand new return spring should set us up pretty well going forward. The final step of the day was to reattach the transmission. Using our hoist, we carefully lowered the transmission down into down the there. chassis, slid it onto our guide pins, and tightened down the bolts. Join us next time as we finish putting this classic Ford Model A chassis back together again on the next episode of Epic Restorations. <laughs>